and then we shall see if this slides out or not. So this seems to be working. Good morning guys, I am back with another video and today's video is going to be super interesting because I am going to be using and reviewing a brand new mold. Uh, oh. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jerrica. I am the owner and creator of Quench. And on this channel, I talk all about my soap business, how I make my products, how I sell them, all the equipment I use, basically how I run this small business out of my home. So if that is a journey that you're also on, or if you're just simply interested in what the heck soap makers do, this channel is for you. And now without further ado, let's get into it. So for today's video, I'm going to be using this soap mold from Winston and Walter. And before I begin, I just want to say that this video is not sponsored by Winston and Walter. I purchased this soap mold, but you guys are in luck. I do have a 5% off discount code that you guys can use when you go to Winston and Walter's website, which I will link down in the description below. And the code is quench5. Now, here's the important bit. This code is only good for 72 hours. So as of the time of this video, is launched right now as of april 13th this code is only good for 72 hours so get on over to that website make that purchase for these soap molds because i mean i know i haven't used it yet but i can already tell that these are going to be amazing for you and your business and if you guys are business owners every little penny counts and thank you so much to july mac for providing this discount code for my viewers i'm really hoping that you guys check her out because she is honestly such a sweet person and i love supporting fellow business owners especially especially my fellow canadian business owners which by the way this is canada made how awesome is that and now without Further, further ado, let's get into the actual review. <laughs> so for those of you who have watched me for a while, you know that I have been using this guy for all of my videos. And this soap mold was purchased at kandorasoap.ca, which I am sure that they don't sell this exact mold anymore. And for those dimensions, this is 23 inches long, 2.5 inches uh, tall, and three inches wide. And this served me really well for two years. It's really sturdy. It's only kind of dirty from being in the oven and uh, being used as a soap mold for so long. But other than that, it's pretty solid. But there were some downsides. For example, this type of soap uh, loaf mold produced soap that was really wide, almost square-like in shape. And while that shape is really great for creating designs and whatnot, it wasn't the best shape ergonomically for my customers. A lot of people prefer a taller and skinnier bar so that it's easier to grip. After I purchased this, almost immediately, I um, regretted it and I really wanted to find a soap loaf mold that was taller and skinnier. I have no idea why, but that type of soap loaf mold was not found in Canada. I could not find a soap supplier that sold a tall and skinny soap loaf mold. And I know I could have gone over to the American side and bought a tall and skinny soap loaf mold from an American soap supplier, but adding the cost of shipping to something as big and heavy as a soap loaf mold, on top of the fact that these molds aren't cheap, it was just way too expensive for me at the time. And I just waited. I waited it out and I'm so glad that I did. Fast forward to what was it, March? Early March, I was in one of my soap groups. I don't know which one it was, but July Mack, who owns Winston & Walter, posted in one of those groups that she was selling these types of molds. And I got super excited because not only was it that tall and skinny shape that's so elusive and so hard to find in Canada, but she was selling them with these silicone liners on the inside. And that is a huge game changer for me. So I reached out to her and I put in a pre-order for two of these molds and they arrived beautifully packaged and all in one piece. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, I have a live unboxing of this mold that's posted on my feed if you want to go check that out. But I was so pleased with the delivery and also the look of this soap mold when it came in. So here is a close-up of the actual soap loaf mold. You can see that the liner is actually quite thick, which is nice. Hopefully that means that it's durable. Again, I'm coming from a place where I have not used a wooden soap loaf mold with a silicone liner on the inside. So I'm not exactly sure what to expect, but 
Uh, so far, I'm pretty impressed. And one really cool thing about this soap loaf mold is that it comes with these little notches. And I believe these are an inch wide, which really helps if you're the type of soap maker who likes to put embeds in their soap and you wanna make sure that you're putting them in a spot where the wire cutters aren't cutting into it. If you're using a wire cutter that's uh, um, has like, it's a multiple, multiple bar soap cutter, I think is what it's called. Anyways, but if you're just using a single wire soap cutter for now, like I am, then these notches are a really great guide to make sure that you're able to put an embed in just the right spot for when you're cutting it to ensure that every bar gets the right amount of um, thingies on top of it. Sorry, the word's escaping me right now. So the plan here is to completely transition all of the soap that I sell on my website and through my company to this tall and skinny soap bar shape. This is gonna be the first time I'm trying it, which is a little nerve wracking. I decided after observing these two together, side by side, they're about the same length. And the only difference, obviously, aside from the silicone liner on the inside and the parchment paper, is that it's much taller. So I'm going to try to make the soap using my current recipe with the current amounts um, just to see. I mean, I could take the time to measure it out and figure out exactly how much soap this thing can hold, but I'm, I'm lazy, guys. That's, that's the real and honest truth about that. <laughs> It, just by eyeballing it, it seems to, to hold about the same amount. So if anything, it'll either be the perfect amount or too much. And you guys are going to find out along with me. So that is very special. And today's soap that we are making today is my Muskoka wood soap. And because this is the first time using something like this, I'm not going to be filming all the ingredients melting down and and everything in slow motion cut into some super trendy music. I'm just gonna talk through this with you guys for this video. It's a little bit different, but um, hopefully you guys like it. Uh, it'll be more like a soap with me chit chat and telling you as I make the soap what I think about this, this soap mold right here. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys like that kind of video. And before I jump right into actually soaping, I do want to include this last little tidbit about Winston & Walter that I think will help you guys make your decision. And that is if you go to their website and make a purchase, you create an account. And once you create an account, then you're automatically entered into their rewards points program, which will allow you guys to save more on your next purchase the next time you order from their website. So before I get to soaping, I'm gonna put this hair away up into a bun of some sort, throw on my hairnet and put on some gloves and get soaping. So for my Muskoka Woods soap, it's actually a blend of fragrance oils and I add in some pine essential oil to the blend and the mix together is, is wonderful. If I could describe Muskoka Woods scent, it would literally be just walking through the woods, you're wearing a sweater, you have maybe coffee in your favorite thermos and you're sipping it and there's a little bit of creamer in there and you feel cozy, you're taking in the scent of the woods and the pine and you just feel like you're up in the Canadian Shield Wilderness. Maybe you're in Algonquin Park, maybe you're in Sturgeon Bay Lake, who knows? But that is the experience that you get when you smell our Muskoka wood soap. So one of the fragrance oils that I use in the Muskoka wood soap has vanilla in it. So it turns it a, like a really pale, beigey color. It smells so good. It's all worth it. Some people avoid vanilla fragrance oils, but for me, I'm a fan. I like it. And I like to work with the, f the color that the, the vanilla fragrance oil turns the soap into. I like to incorporate it into my designs. I feel that people shouldn't be afraid of making brown soap. I recently unboxed Katie Carson's uh, soap launch and she had a rustic looking soap. It was for March and it was her a floral soap. I think the notes were lavender, chamomile, and sage. And that soap was so simple looking. It was brown. But it was gorgeous and so many people are fans of just simple soap which is why i don't think it's a big deal if the soap turns brown you guys shouldn't be worried too much about that not everyone loves the super swirly colorful soaps you know what i mean so that was the pine essential oil going in and what's cool about the muskoka wood scent is that it's pretty unisex but a lot of men really like it it's a more masculine leaning smell 
And I think it's always a good idea to add that to your line because yes, women really like handmade soap, but there is a huge market of men that also really love handmade soap. Hello, look at that soap company, oh, Dr. Squatch. They are a million dollar company. I'm pretty sure like they are selling like crazy and their whole target market is men and they are selling them handmade soap. So don't ignore the men side of things. <laughs> I know some people are wondering if I want to make a, a man soap, how do I do that? Well, you can always consult your husband or your brother or your dad and ask them what they like, but don't let them know that it's about handmade soap. Maybe just ask them. Uh, you know what they look for in a cologne you'll find that the notes are pretty consistent a lot of men really like pine they really like a woodsy smell they really like patchouli anything earthy and deep uh, I find are really is really popular with men a lot of men like mint that kind of stuff and when you're creating the product and it's targeted towards men I would avoid the bright colors keep it simple and just make it about the benefits of the product and the, the manly scent of the product. And I'm sure that you will get men to um, buy your products more. So we're about to pour and I'm a little freaked out. This is so weird. I'm always expecting to see a parchment paper liner. So now that there isn't one, I'm kind of like, oh gosh, I'm a little worried, but we're going to pour this in. One thing I have not considered before is that it's a bit of a narrower opening than what I'm used to working with, so hopefully my aim is good. I'm gonna be pouring this carefully into the mold, and oh my gosh, it's happening, guys. It's happening. Oh, okay. I'm getting it in there, but I am also pouring it a lot more carefully than I usually do. I'm usually just throwing the soap in there and hoping for the best. I did choose one of my soaps that um, doesn't accelerate very quickly to try the soap mold out on purpose so that it goes as trouble-free as possible. And I can see that I'm already creating a bit of a mess on the sides, that's okay. It's a soap loaf mold that's supposed to get dirty. I'm just gonna give it a shake. Now let's pour the colors. I'm hoping that you guys have a good angle on this. I'm hoping and praying that it's looking good over there on your end. Like I can see it, looks good to me. So we are gonna be pouring the first color in. We're gonna layer it. This is also different for me because you have such a, a narrow space for your swirls. Kind of like the wider bars for the designs and such. Oh, went over to the edge there. You know when you get something brand new that you know you're gonna get messy with, but you don't wanna mess it up? I think cars is a good example of that. When you uh, buy a brand new car and you're like trying to be clean and uh, you just know it's gonna be a mess, but you know, it still kills you anyways when you uh, mess it up. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> I'm inserting my tool into here, my swirl tool to make my swirlies. I'm so nervous, I don't know why I'm so nervous. So far, so good in terms of the soap fitting into here. I could be short, I think is what I'm gonna end up being. It's gonna be a little bit shorter than what I am used to. That is okay. We're gonna do swirlies part two. I like to do two layers of swirls, especially if you have a taller soap bar. You have more vertical room for that, I guess. Now we're gonna scrape these guys, get every last bit of soap. I'm so excited to see how these bars will turn out. Like, I don't think you guys understand. Really, really excited to be using this tall and skinny soap loaf mold, you do not even know. Now I'm gonna scrape out the brown, and I don't think I mentioned it, but I got this brown from cocoa powder. It's a nice colorant that you wouldn't think work, would work well in soap, but it absolutely does. If you want a nice brown, you can do that. So you can see I'm just about short, so the next time I make soap, I'll probably add um, a few more grams so that we can get all the way to the top. I'm just going to add texture to the tops of my soaps, which is what I love to do. And it's interesting because I have so much less surface area to play around with. So that is a bit of a learning curve. And I'm gonna add my tops. And scrape out the rest of this container onto the top of my soap loaf mold. Next part is swirling it. And there you go.
so you can see now that it's poured, my soap did not get all the way to the top. It's almost there, but not quite. Um, I still have some space to go. So the next batch I make using the soap mold, I will be adding a little bit more soap batter to the mix. I'll be upping my oils and then of course, recalculating all of that through soap calc. I really want to get the soap all the way to the top. So my thoughts on actually using this, I think it's great. It was so nice to just jump right into soaping without having to spend the time to make the liner. Yes, I was quick at it, but it was still a lot of steps that I'm so glad I don't have to be taking anymore. I'm so excited to see how well the soap pops out of this silicone liner. I'm really anxious about that, um, slash excited. More excited than anxious. And I just noticed that this soap mold has removable sides. So the sides come up, meaning you can uh, get the actual soap out of this uh, mold without wrestling with it, which is, um, you know, might be a concern for some people. This easily pops out, and then hopefully the actual soap will pop out easily from the silicone liner. From the few videos that I've seen of other soap makers using the soap mold, they've been able to get their soaps out pretty easily, so I'm not too, too worried about that. But there is a loud noise over there. So the next time you see me, it will be the next day where I actually unmold this soap and you can see how easily or how difficult that is. So I'll see you tomorrow when I'm able to do that. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back. It is the next day and I'm going to be unmolding my Muskoka wood soap and I'm gonna take you along with me for that. My old molds were wider and this is thinner, obviously, but the same amount of soap fills overfills this one and underfills this one, so I'm going to have to adjust that uh, for future soap loafs in this mold. But other than that, it's, it's basically the same thing. And now we're gonna get to the fun part, getting this out of this mold and see how easy that is. So I mentioned this earlier, yesterday when I was making it, that you can slide out the sides and that should make getting this silicone liner out much easier, so. Let's pull the sides out. See, it lifts up like that. And then we're gonna do it to the other side. And that frees up the soap in the silicone mold. Should slide right out. Silicone is very grippy. So that's the only resistance I'm getting there. And then once it's out, it's out. And then these pieces slide right back in and it's ready for the next soap. Although I did get some soap on the inside that I'm gonna have to clean, but it's gonna get messy over time. I'm, I'm okay with that, I've accepted it. <laughs> and here we have the soap in the silicone mold. So let me get some gloves on. I'm going to uh, get my soap cutter and my platform that I use and see how easily this guy gets out of here. Okay, here is the part that I was most worried about and that was getting this soap out of the silicone liner because in the beginning of my soap making journey, I used a silicone mold and it was always tough getting the soap out of there. So we'll see. Well, right away I can tell you this liner is really pliable. It's not very stiff, whereas my silicone mold was very stiff and that might've been the reason why it was so hard to get soap out of there. But I don't know if you can see this, but it peels right away off of the soap. And I'm going to pull the sides, and then we shall see if this slides out or not. So this seems to be working, and there we go. It just pulled right out. Nice. And this is what we got. Already I can tell that these bars are taller than my usual bar, and I'm holding it like this. It fits into my hand so much easier, which is awesome. So now let's cut this soap and see what it looks like on the inside, which is probably what everyone is curious about.
So here are the finished soap bars. And one thing I do want to point out is if you use silicone, you uh, risk getting these little pockets here, these little pock marks. I don't exactly know what causes them. I think it has to do with maybe the heat, not too sure. But for me, I don't know if you can see that clearly, let me. But for me, I don't mind. I think it adds to the handmade look of the soap. And one benefit about using the silicone molds is that you get such nice crisp lines. There's no uh, puckering or wavy lines that you would get using the parchment paper, which I would always get. And it just makes such a cleaner bar. Am I using the right grammar? I don't think I'm using the right, the right grammar, but <laughs> it makes a much cleaner looking bar. Oh my gosh, I am obsessed. I love it. Wow. So let me cut the cucumber melon soap and I will show you side by side the two bars so you can really get a sense of uh, how different the two soap shapes make. So here's the direct comparison between my old soap bar shape and the new soap bar shape. And you can see how uh, much cleaner the lines are as opposed to my old soap bar shape that I used with my old soap mold and over here is what I was talking about when it came to lining it with parchment. Sometimes I will get a curved corner because I didn't hug it in the corner perfectly and over here you can see the example of a fold in the parchment paper that translated itself onto the soap bar and you know i don't mind um, when soap has little imperfections like that but i do acknowledge that using the silicone liner there is a mark marked improvement when it comes to that so very pleased and these bars are about the same width I'm going to measure them, but they should be approximately the same weight. This one is just taller, whereas this one is wider. Um, but I will, moving forward, probably add a few more grams to my soap, uh, my soap, what do you call it? My soap recipe so that I can get all the way to the top um, when it comes to making the soap. And the reason why I like going all the way to the top is I like to take pictures of the soap batter in the soap mold and if there's a depression in there, I just, I don't think it looks very good. So <laughs> I'm going to make my bars move forward um, a little bit taller. They're gonna be a little bit heavier and that is all gonna be good for my customers. So excited for you guys to see what comes next and what comes out of that mold next. I think the next bars I'm going to be making out of this mold will be um, my Georgian Bay soap. Um, wondering if you guys are interested in seeing that, how that soap bar will look in a taller and skinnier form. Excited to do that. And as you can see, there is going to be a bit of cleanup. I'd rather clean up the silicone liner again and again and again and reuse it again and again than to just discard this and, and add waste to our trash because that is what I was doing with the parchment paper. So I'm super pleased with how this worked and how easy it was to use. So a bit of a reminder if you made it through this video that you can get your hands on soap molds just like this from a Canadian supplier and you can even use my code QUENCH5 to get 5% off of your order. And it might not seem like a lot, but with these soap molds, they are quite pricey. So 5% is quite a bit of money saved and any little bit, any little penny you can save on your business is a good one, am I right? <laughs> and just a bit of a reminder that that code is only good for 72 hours as of this video being live. And after that, you can't use it anymore. So <laughs> uh, make sure you go ahead and do that and don't wait because these molds are absolutely amazing. And remember, I'm not sponsored. I just really love supporting small Canadian businesses like Winston and Walter. I'm so happy to do it, especially when they provide such amazing products like this that I genuinely love to use. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. And if you did, please leave a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, please subscribe. And until then, keep smiling, keep being awesome. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.